Good evening, everybody. They have kept the best for the last. And also, they have given me a very strategic time, 4.20. <laughs> so, I started my life way back in Goa, and I have come till here, and I would just like to check out the main points, what I learned and what I needed to change the perspective of my life. One of the most difficult questions for me to answer is, Hi ma'am, where are you from? And I'm so thoroughly confused. I was born in Goa. I was brought up in five different states. I've studied in eight schools, three colleges. I can understand and speak quite a few languages and have changed 28 houses. For me, every house is a new opportunity. The only constant in my life was my family. That was my home. That is what I carried with me. And I had a fantastic childhood, a golden childhood with a good balance of urban as well as rural. I've lived in Mumbai and I have lived in Agumbe. My vacation was in Agumbe Someshwar, which is considered to be the wildlife sanctuary. And I have spent time so many years there in close contact with nature. So it was a golden childhood. And today, I stand here maybe because of that perspective. When I listen to some of the parents saying that, oh, you know what, my uh, student or my child's teacher has changed and my child is in trauma. This teacher left in the middle of the year and oh my God, what is going to happen to the future of my child? Take a look at me. I have seen more teachers than students in my life. And with every change, I have only improved. So if there is a change, it's always towards improvement. And the most exciting thing in life is to open up new doors. You never know what is beyond that particular closed door. And that's what is exciting. But you know, sometimes there is a fear. That fear is maybe because when there is nobody behind you. But when you have a family of four sisters, a mother and a father like I had, I could open any door, any window, and it would always be a learning experience for me. And how did I end up what I'm teaching today? Frankly telling, I have no idea what I'm teaching today. But let's see, what am I considered to be a specialist in? Every time I see students looking up at Google and searching and seeing that, which is the best college, which is the best course, I'm going to do a future in this particular area. In retrospect, I find that the subjects chose me. I had no choice of subject because every time there's a transfer and we go to a new place, I would go to the nearest school, find what subjects are there, take them up, new opportunities. And that's how I landed up in Mumbai and take, took up a course in life sciences. So I feel the subjects chose me over a period of time. And even in my research, I have ended up as a pterodologist. So if I were to make a choice of my career, I'm sure I would never have chosen this. But this subject has chosen me. I work on ferns. So this is the tree fern growing in the Western Ghats of the Kudramukh region. And there's another fern there which is causing a super problem in that particular area and growing like a weed. Like a weed. And I was introduced to a new science. After doing masters in zoology, I ended up doing PhD in plant sciences. So you would say interdisciplinary is in. I was in 30 years back. So I chose to do a subject of specialization, which I had no basics about. And it was Father Leo de Souza who introduced me to test tube trees. And this is my test tube baby that was born in the test tube. And today it stands in St. Teresa's Park in St. Aloysius College. And this was in 95. And yeah. And today, 
I have a tree there. Tall, dark and handsome. My test tube baby. So this is the privilege that I've had of learning a new science, a new branch. And when I learned about trees and when I started working on trees, I came to understand some things like plant intelligence. We fail to understand intelligence without a brain. So if I were to tell you there is an intelligence which is brainless, I'm sure some of you would say, I knew it. So there is a brainless form of intelligence and this is in plant systems. How do you define intelligence? A problem solving capacity, a recognition of self capacity, a capacity to adapt, to change, to sense change and move on. All these qualifications are there in a plant and still we are looking for alternative forms of intelligence in outer space and fail to recognize alternative forms of intelligence just besides us. So this is where we need to look at forms of intelligence. And there's another factor that gave me a lot of respect towards this plant. This is on uh, Hibakujuma Ko. These are a group of plants that were reborn or rejuvenated after the man's most dastardly act of nuclear bomb. So when a nuclear bomb was dropped in Hiroshima, they believed that hundreds years of hundreds of years, no life would be formed there. And within 90 days, you had a few group of trees germinating in the spot about 20 meters from the epicenter. So this is the tenacity of the trees that we are talking about and how we cannot help but to bow down to these mighty forces of life, mighty forms of intelligence that surround us. And as I worked with plant systems, I found that, uh, I found that they are not always reacting to the way that we want them to react. So for example, I wanted to work on a tree and make it to happen in a test tube and it was not happening. And then when my boss came and asked me, Smita, what is happening to your results? And I said, Father, the plant is not cooperating. The plant is recalcitrant. The trees are very difficult to work with. And then I got malaria. I had to go to a hospital nearby to do a blood test. And I could escape from my work and go during the lunchtime. And there, there was a very frightened looking sister who poked. She said, can you come after 10 minutes? I said, no, I have to get it done now. Then she poked me here. No blood. Poked me here. No blood. And then she looks at me nervously. Then I realized this is a student. And you know, I'm a teacher. So a teacher should always encourage the student. So I said, yeah, yeah, come on, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. And then here she gives me a poke and then still not drawn a blood. Then she said, can I try the other hand, ma'am? I said, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Five pokes and no blood drawn. And then the matron comes and says, what are you doing? And then she shivers and she said, patient not cooperating. <laughs> so I was paid back by the same coin on the same day. And there I was bleeding and laughing hysterically. And the sister was quite shocked what's happening because that's exactly what we do. I come back to class and I say, students are not paying attention to me, patient not cooperating. The plants are not working according to what, but I never ever confess that I do not know to draw blood. I do not understand plant systems. We do not have enough resources to understand this, this form of intelligence. So instead of that, we say, patient not cooperating. So this is something trees taught me that to be patient, and patient will definitely cooperate. And the next proposal that I intend to do for Mangalore City is a high density uh, tree planting that is going to happen. And in Mangalore, they are going to plant about one lakh trees. And I intend to do mapping and trying to understand what are the services these trees provide to a city. So why do we need to have a forest in a region away from the city? 
Why cannot we have high density forests in the city as traffic islands? Why do we always plant them at the side of the road, knowing very well in 20 years time, when the tree is tall, dark and handsome, you're going to expand the road and you're going to kill them. So why are we going to put them in such vulnerable positions? Why cannot we have a separate area in which they can live happily ever after, as long as they live? So hopefully this dream will come true. And in this dream, I'm trying to map every tree on campus. And this is our campus and I have mapped around 1,900 trees on this particular campus. I know each one of them by name. And this is how I go about learning some things in life. This is how we go about making research, trying to understand plant system. I'll give you an analogy here. Uh, we had an attender who came from a place where there was no road. Imagine a place where there is no toilet, no electricity, no road. There are such places still in India. And people from there come to the city looking for better means of life. So one such first generation learner was working with us as an attender. And one day my boss says, go and bring a taxi. And this boy comes and says, Smitha, taxi and reenu. And then I said, what are you saying? Go outside the compound and you'll find many taxis there. I have a class. And I went ahead and took my class. I came back after one hour and this boy has not come back with the taxi and my boss is really upset. And after one and a half hours, he comes, glee on his face, and happy, and he says, Sveta, nimge gutunta. I said, what? Taxi andre car. Taxi is a car. So he discovered that taxi is a car. Then I took his hand and I would like to know how he discovered that. Okay, so I said, come sit down, tell me, how did you discover taxi is a car? So he said, you know, our boss is a little old. So when he said, bring me a taxi, he looked very anxious. So I thought it is a medicine. So I walked across the college, went to the medical shop and asked for a taxi. And the medical shop person said, we don't get taxis here, you get taxi in Hampangatta. So he felt that this particular taxi may be a big medicine show, sold only in a big shop. So this must be a small shop. So he goes to that particular area, looks at the biggest medical shop and goes and asks for a taxi. And that particular person ignores him and he stands there 15 minutes asking for a taxi. And then some bypasser takes pity on him and says, this is a taxi. And he goes and asks that person, is this a taxi? And then the door is open and he is made to sit in. First time in life, he's sitting inside a taxi. And then he comes like a king. And he says, Gotta taxi and the car. That is the discovery that happened. So every time in science, in research, in teaching, whenever we go with an unknown fact and we find it, there is so much joy. You know what is even more fascinating after that? He comes and tells me, why did you have to send me there? Taxi is there everywhere. Only taxi unto, illi taxi unto, illi taxi unto. You can see the taxi everywhere. But when you are faced with a problem, you cannot recognize it anywhere. But once you know about it, you will be able to see it everywhere. So you will be able to understand the significance of these plants and try to see their importance everywhere once you know them. And some people ask me, why are you doing this? Is it a part of project? Is somebody asking you to do it? Well, there's nothing I can answer except tell you maybe one more story. There's a gentleman who goes to an Udupi restaurant. It's a fictitious story. And then he goes there and says, I want, I'm very hungry. I want to eat idli. And then the server comes and serves him a plate. And he eats four of them and he says, not enough. Get me some more. And then he gets four more and he says, not enough, get me some more. And then he has the 13th idli and he says, now I am full. And goes up to the counter and says, I am going to pay only for this 13th idli because this is the one that gave me the satisfaction. You may laugh and say, who is this foolish person standing right in front of you, trying to tell you that Planting trees, giving service to people is giving a lot of happiness. So this is my 13th idli. It is up to each one of you to find 
your idli many times it may not be an idli right now you saw it could be a chutney or a sambar or it could be a chapati or it could be the first thing that you did in your life you found a lot of satisfaction and that could be your 13th idli so growing plants working with plant system is my 13th idli go find your own all right so the last slide i've chosen a lesser trodden path and the theme of this particular event is love conquers all and i debunk this theory and say that in love there is no conquest no defeat and love only prevails thank you so much <laughs>